is here for a few hours. Please welcome Jonathan Cabiria. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, don't leave. What oh, you have to pee? Uh, come back. Should I wait? No, don't have time. Okay. Uh, Bruce, where are you? Yo. Where? Oh, hi. You stole my stuff. Sorry, man. I was going to talk about Carla. I had a wonderful PowerPoint. You ruined the whole thing. Well, I had a backup, and I was going to talk about depression, but you did that too. So, what I thought I would talk about instead is, uh, in the past year, I've been working, uh, doing research on virtual world effects. Uh, I'm a psychologist, uh, professor, a uh, couple of other things, but I was very interested in uh, how uh, participation in behavioral worlds affects real life. So, I've, I've got this PowerPoint thing here. It's sort of connected to what I'm talking about, but mostly it's there if you get bored listening to me, you have something to look at, and I think you're listening. So it's on automatic, so we'll just move along. Uh, the first part of this uh, has to do with identity, and that's what I uh, talk about in virtual worlds, uh, research in virtual worlds. Uh, we present ourselves uh, in, a, in a lot of different ways depending on the situation that we're in. Uh, so we have a lot of different identities. Uh, we have a different identity with our family, perhaps. We have different identities with uh, uh, people that we work with, uh, people that we socialize with. We even have different identities if we're just standing at the bus stop waiting for something, we're standing among strangers. Uh, a lot of this is, is very subconscious. Uh, we're not aware of it, but we have so many different facets uh, that we present. And what is the reason for all of these identities? And the reason really is for uh, evolutionarily uh, for safety, for survival. Uh, we present ourselves in a certain way to certain people in order to feel in some way connected or in some way to feel safe. And this is how uh, society operates and this is why we have communities. We come together uh, to be safe and to evolve safely. So, what does this have to do with lit? What does this have to do with uh, technology? Well, it has a lot to do with uh, the social communities that are popping up all over the place. Uh, we need to feel connected. We need to feel a sense of belonging. Uh, if we don't have that, we feel kind of outcast. And in fact, if we present ourselves with uh, a facet of our identities, uh, that other people don't like or that make them uncomfortable, they start to push us aside. Uh, eventually, you become marginalized. Uh, and there are uh, a lot of people in society that are marginalized. Uh, the dominant society has pushed them aside for one reason or another, whether fairly, unfairly. Um, there's a lot of psychological reasons why we do that. And actually, there is a survival reason why we push others aside. Uh, but that's we don't really need to talk about that right here. Uh, so what people do if they feel that they don't quite belong or they can't quite get the identity of the social community, whether that community be society at large, whether it be their families, whether it be school, uh, whether it be at work, they do generally one of two things. They either rebel and they hyper-identify themselves. Uh, and they may do this with multiple piercings and, and tattoos and wild hair or no hair, uh, different kinds of clothing styles, different ways of speaking, different ways of expressing themselves uh, as a way of uh, saying, basically, fuck you, this is who I am, take it or leave it. Uh, and then some, some other people actually become repressed. Uh, they close in and they may actually cloak themselves with an identity affect of the society to which they wish to belong. Uh, where are we here? Okay. Uh, I lost my thought. Uh, so they, they hide and they become repressed. And uh, that's the part that really concerns me because they have severe psychological effects eventually from suppressing their identities and pretending to be someone else in order to fit in. In essence, they are living an inauthentic life. 
So in my research, I uh, started, I had a group of people and I started following them as they uh, went about their happy adventures in a virtual world, specifically Second Life, but not exclusively. Uh, and I interviewed them and I assessed them, uh, followed them, observed them, did all kinds of crazy analytical things that kept me up till three, four, five in the morning. Um, and discovered some really interesting things. Does anyone know Divine? I love Divine. Uh, that, that, that what had happened to a, a large number of these people, and these were marginalized people that we were talking about, that we were uh, researching, they did a complete turnaround. Uh, by being in the virtual world, they were able to bring out these facets of their identities that had been repressed. And they were able to explore them in what I would call a safe harbor, an environment which allowed them to do this. Uh, but one thing that I didn't, I did anticipate that, but one thing that I didn't anticipate was that they became stronger and they, their self-esteem had uh, uh, gotten higher. Their uh, depression had lifted. Uh, their sense of isolation had gone away. They felt that they belonged somewhere. They found a community of similar others, which we all need. Uh, and the effect that uh, I had not anticipated was that these good, positive benefits transferred out into the real world transferred back into the real lives. Uh, for some people, it was a longer process than others. Uh, for some, it was, it was um, actually kind of scary because they had been so enmeshed in this very negative way of living. Uh, and we all know that change does not come easy sometimes. Uh, they went through a difficult transition and others just snapped right into it and uh, really just brought it back out into the real world. Uh, Okay, uh, so what we're looking at here is uh, a, a strange juxtaposition uh, between the real world and the virtual world. And uh, some of the, the uh, participants had, had said that they felt more real and more authentic in their virtual lives, and they felt more phony in their, in their real lives. Uh, and I thought that very odd, the, the uh, crisscross. And uh, so, and the second fa uh, finding was the, uh, the permeability of this uh, artificial membrane that we create in our language and our thinking between a real world and virtual world. Uh, in fact, one of the participants uh, very angrily said to me, why do you keep dividing this? Why are you talking about this as if it's two separate things? This is all one life. Uh, it's just one thing. It's not one or the other. It's both. Uh, and our previous speaker, Pierre, had uh, alluded to that in, in terms of uh, this blending, uh, bringing things together. And uh, so I thought I might even want to call this at some point One Life. Uh, and here are some of the quotes from some of my uh, participants. Uh, yeah, I'll just let you read these for, for a moment. But uh, these are... Uh, uh, pretty much uh, indicative of all the other uh, statements that people had made. Uh, when they come into virtual life, they, they just felt more real and more alive and more in touch. Uh, they were able to safely uh, pull up these things that they had pushed down for so long uh, and to re-experience themselves in a more authentic manner, getting rid of their phony self. So yeah, we're just looking about perme permeability, transference, uh, the breaking down the wall. So what does this mean for you? Uh, well, what does this mean for psychologists, for educators, for developers uh, who are creating these social environments? Uh, what it means is, and I think that uh, for Second Life, uh, when Phil Rosedale and his team were putting together Second Life, I don't think they realized uh, some of the power behind what they were creating. And so I challenge you uh, those of you that are developers, uh, when you are putting together your social networks, to start to think a little broader and maybe a little deeper about some of the impact of what you're doing, because it may go far beyond what you thought it would. Uh, we are social creatures, and we're always looking for ways to solidify our place in society, and that's why we do these social worlds. 
Thank you very much. Enjoy the conference. Thank you. Thank you.